here's a tough one. And not only are all nine balls up the table, which is very unusual, it's just a tough out, leaving no margin of error for like the first five balls. Once you get through the first five balls, you'll be okay. But uh, just getting to that point is just going to take some pretty darn good shooting. If you were if you were playing a competitive match here, I'd definitely tell you to look for safety on the one ball, not the two ball, the one ball. Uh, just because just just getting in a position to play safety on the two ball, if you make the one, is is difficult. Like that one ball shot is hard in itself. I'm um, getting back to play a shot for the two in a position to get back to the three is just nearly impossible. Or you could push out, and you could tie up a couple balls while you're pushing out, and just you know, but be careful there because your opponents are able to say no. Nope, you can have it. So, yeah, let me show you what's making this so hard. Let's go to the griff. Other than playing a safety or push out, what's the offensive options here? And I'm not going to go you know, behind this nine ball and try to shoot a combination on two six. I'm just, you know, I avoid combinations at all costs if I can. And it's another option to be in a position of, of safe by getting in this window here between the 7 and the 5. You don't have an offensive shot on the 2 ball if you do that. You don't have a bank because of both of those balls. And so that's, you know, I mean, if you're going to play a safety, you might as well do it on the 1 ball. And if you're going to pull back to that window right there, you might as well pull back to this window right here because now at least you're giving yourself an offensive chance to win this game. But it's real, real easy to come up short and get stuck behind the five or go too long and get stuck behind the six. And, and you pretty much have to get perfect on the two ball to get back on this three ball without upsetting either one of those five or six balls. Yeah, it's a lot. And getting from the two to the three... If you're, you know, your only shot is to shoot the two ball down in this corner, so that in itself becomes difficult to get the right shot on the three to get back on the four. You know, it's just getting started here is crazy. And then when we get right on the four ball, um, getting, I mean, this five ball shot's not going to be easy because I have to shoot it in the, in the side right there to get right on the six. So, yeah, a lot going on. Um, the only reason I'm not playing safety is because I'm making a video here and you know what kind of video is that going to be here's how to play safe bye, bye I'll see you tomorrow or here's how to play a push out and be in and the only way to do that is just show you like 20 examples of good push outs or good safeties on this one ball so uh, let's go ahead and get started on this game and uh, shoot the one ball and we'll come back to a graphic and take it from there It's a tough cut. It's a really tough cut, and it's a long cut, and no legitimate player is going to blame you for playing safe here, and furthermore, it's an easy safety. Uh, I can also tell you that they're still thinking about that one ball shot. And what I've noticed uh, players who haven't gotten over the hump do on shots like this one and this two is they tense up, and they tend to hit it too hard, and they lose their stroke, and they also kind of jump up a little bit. That's a very common mistake, and it's a very uh, it's it's one of the big lessons to learn as you're trying to get over that hump, and you know what I mean. Uh, just because the shot is long and hard doesn't mean you have to shoot it hard. And there, there's there's kind of a break in 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 your brain right there if you find yourself slamming these shots. You have to remind yourself to keep your rhythm, shoot it smooth, stay down, keep your cool. And again, with, with this shot now coming off that rail, you have a chance of hitting that, that five ball if you don't spin the cue ball enough. So that's another thing to think about. But all these decisions should be made before you get down on the shot and then just go ahead and resume. I 
there's another touchy shot because if we look at the four ball line, we want to get on the left hand side of that line just to be able to get right on the five. You want to get as straight in as you can on the five to shoot it in this side right there. And that will allow easy position on the six to get to the seven and back on the eight. Anytime you're shooting your fouling ball in the side pocket in a situation like this, it can be really, really deceiving. So take the time and find the exact line in the five ball, and you'll see me pointing to it on the video. And what I'm doing is looking for where that line intersects on the rail, so I know exactly where I want to leave this cue ball. But where you want to leave it can also be deceiving. If we follow this line through the five ball to the rail, and we can choose to try to get straight in on that line, which would be great. But a better idea is to get a little bit on the left-hand side of that line because that'll allow us to go down table a little bit when we shoot this five. You don't want to be in a position where you're on the right side of that five ball line because you're going to have to you're you're going to have to hold the cue ball up and I mean there's a really good chance it can get really complicated and get really really bad on the six ball really easily and not be just not just be in a terrible position. I got a little closer to the rail than I wanted, but I couldn't use that rail and bounce off it because I would have got further. I would have got too far on to the left, and then I would have had to hit the seven to stop it, and it could have got complicated. So I just kind of played it safe. And now I'm just going to roll up on the five, let the cue ball do what it does, and uh, we should have a shot in that window between the seven and the nine for a good, sh good angle on the six to get back on the seven. And with that, I think we're going to wrap it up. The big, the hard thing about 9-ball is just getting started and getting a shot off the break on the 1-ball, parking, parking the cue ball in the center of the table and making sure that 1-ball is near a pocket, and then proceeding through the 4-ball. Once you get through the 4-ball, you should be good to go. And the game gets easier as you go along, and the table tells you what to do. You break the balls, and... and you, I mean, you don't have a choice. You have to shoot certain balls before other balls. So, you know, you can either do it or you can. Whereas in April, you, know, you have a lot more creativity. And the game gets harder as you get closer to the last ball. And because a lot of things can go wrong along the way. And you can sit there and plan it out after the break. And everything looks great in your head. And then things just go wrong. And it just gets harder and harder as you get closer to the April. With 9-ball, it gets easier and easier because the table opens up and you're in line and all you have to do is kind of stay in line and everything should be good. But they're two different animals. One game is not easier than the other. And if you ask me, they can't can be compared. They call for different parts of your brain and they're just different strategies. I love both of them, so yeah, I don't know why most of my videos are on 9-ball. It's just the way it is. Uh, I'm going to roll it from start to finish. We're going to do a loop back. I appreciate you guys coming by. We have a live stream coming up on Sunday night at 7 Eastern Time, 7 p.m. And uh, I'll see you there if you want to stop by. Peace, guys.